Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to respond to a flurry of recent requests from viewers to create a tutorial that demonstrates how to use the Solver tool in Excel. The keys to understanding Solver are four points. Number one, Solver is an add-in tool and it is not installed or activated by default. Later on in the lesson, I'm going to show you how to go through and activate the Solver tool. The second key point is determining the target cell. What cell specifically do you want Solver to produce a result for? So it must be a cell that contains a formula and you have choices. You have three choices. You can ask Solver to maximize the result of your target cell, minimize the result of your target cell, or in our lesson today, to set a specific value as a result in your target cell. The third key point in understanding Solver is that you have changing cells. Which are the changing cells that you want Solver to change automatically? And the key here is that the changing cells must feed in to the target cell. The fourth key point is establishing constraints. And this is what sets Solver apart from GoalSeq. In this case, what we're doing is we're asking Solver to take into consideration real world constraints. All right, let's move over here into the real world example that I've set up for this lesson. I have over here a spreadsheet and I've established a goal. That's important. And notice that down here I've written it out. What I want as a result of Solver is that in the target cell, I want Solver to be able to optimize the sales to achieve a 56% gross profit. So at the end of creating the Solver and running it, I want this result in this target cell, which contains a formula to have a result of 56% gross profit. The cells that I want Solver to change automatically are these cells over here, the units, the cell. The two constraints that I've set up are that number one, I want the quantity available not to be negative. So in achieving the 56% gross profit, I want to make sure that I have at least uh, sold out the inventory that I currently have on hand. Constraint number two is related to constraint number one. The ch by changing cells, I want to make sure that they are a positive number. So I don't want Solver to say, well, sell quantity that you don't have on hand to, to achieve this target result of 56% gross profit. So the key is to really understand how to set up your data set. How to set up, in this case, my current inventory, how to set up a, uh, formulas that determine gross profit dollars gross profit percentage and over here in my ideal mix this is my target cell these are by my by changing cells all right the next best practice which I did not list on my outline is to work on a copy of the cell uh, work on a copy of the worksheet so over here understand that I've made two copies of my original so I'm going to actually work on a copy of this. I want to begin by selecting the target cell over here. What I want is to have this result after I run the solver to become 56% gross profit percentage. Now come over here onto the data tab and we want to make sure that we have in the analysis group the solver added. As I mentioned, later on in the lesson I'm going to show you how to activate this. So even though we started with the cell we want to make sure that our set target cell is going to become this specific cell. We have three choices to maximize the result, minimize the result, or set it to a specific value. As I mentioned up here I want to achieve a specific value of 56 percent. So I'll type in 56 percent for my gross profit. My by changing cells, the cells that I want Solver to change to produce this result are the units to sell. Now notice over here that I had plugged in some initial estimates and it did give me the result that I was looking for. That's what I want to use Solver for. Now next I want to establish the constraints. 
I wrote out the constraints. So the first constraint is that the quantity available cannot be a negative number. So the units left, the quantity available cannot be a negative number. So down here I want to add in my first constraint. The cell references are over here. And I want to use the operator that it must be greater than or equal to 0. I want to add in a second constraint. And I recommend that you write out your goal your by changing cells and your constraints. So the units to cell must be a positive number. I don't want to have it produce a 56% gross profit on product that I do not have available to sell. So the cell reference over here, the units to sell, and again, I want that to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so now I have my goal, my target cell. I have my by changing cells over here, and I have two constraints. Units left must be greater than or equal to zero, and the units to sell, which are the by changing cells, must be greater than or equal to zero. Click OK. All right, now here we have our target cell. We have established it to be a specific result of 56% gross profit. The by changing cells, which Solver will perform for us automatically, subject to these two constraints. Now we're ready to click Solve. And there you go. So now I have my result, 56%. And I can keep the solver solution. But what's important is to create a report. So I'm going to re create a report, which is the answer to. And again, remember that I've been working on a copy of my original. So if it didn't work out as I had expected, I always have my original to go back to. So click OK. So now here is our target cell, which has the result that we were looking for, a 56% gross profit. That was my goal. That was my target. The cells that I asked uh, Solver to change were these cells over here, the units to sell. I wanted to make sure that it was subject to these constraints, that the quantity available, the quantity that was left, had to be 0 or a positive number. And the units to sell, which is the second constraint, had to also be a positive number. So if I look over here on my answer report, here is my original value, 51% gross profit. Here's my final value after using Solver, 56% gross profit. And these were the adjustable cells. These were the by changing cells. So the original value, the final value that Solver created. And over here, the constraints using the formulas. And if it's binding, it means that it was set in, 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 I could not change it. It was a constant value. The not binding were the results of the by changing. It's what I asked Solver to change for me. So there you've seen a brief introduction to Solver. Now let me come back here and show you how to add in Solver. Again, remember that it's not installed by default. Over here on the Data tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007-2010, you should see an Analysis group over here and Solver. I'm using Excel 2007 over here, so I'm going to go into the Office button, and I want to choose Excel Options. Over here in the Add-ins, I want to make sure in the Excel Add-ins that the Solver tool has been added in. If it's not, just click Go and make sure that you have a check mark next to the solver. In Excel 2003 and earlier, go to the Tools menu and choose Add-ins and follow a similar, uh, result, uh, similar process. Again, understanding that the target cell must contain a formula. So when I come back over here and I look at my target cell, my target cell contains a formula. It's saying take the gross profit dollars divided by the gross sales dollars. So it must contain a formula, and the by changing cells must also feed into the formula. So the units to sell feed into my formula. 
I also want to make sure when I come over here on my uh, checkbox that I have the key to making solver work is setting up the constraints. And I strongly recommend that you just write out your scenario. So if you write out your goal, your target cell, if you write out the by changing cells, if you write out the constraints, the model constraints that you want to establish, that will help you to have a uh, you know a, a successful result of using solver. So solver is typical of the tips that I offer on my DVD ROMs, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007, and I will look for you in the next lesson.